I'm so happy to be joined today by David Sirota, um, Bernie Sanders' speechwriter and someone who has had a long and fascinating career in journalism before this. Somewhat Thank you for infamously. That. I appreciate that. <laughs> at this point. No, notorious, notorious, maybe not infamous, infamous, notorious. Notoriously. Notorious. Um, can you talk a little bit about when you first met Senator Sanders and where your relationship started? Sure. So I was. Um, Oh God, I have to think about it. Um, it's a long time ago. It was um, it was the year 1999. <laughs> so um, I was uh, basically just out of college. Uh, I worked on a couple campaigns, uh, and I had sent a resume, a bunch of resumes, around to Capitol Hill. And back then, I don't know if they do this anymore, but back then you had to send your resume to. They wouldn't tell you who you were applying to. They would do these ads in, in like roll call in the hill, and they hmm. would say, um, you know, they would describe a congressperson. They would say, you know, um, northeastern Democrat or western Republican or huh. whatever. And and I remember, I get I so I send my resume all over Capitol Hill to a bunch of different offices, and I get a call from Jeff Weaver, and he says I'm calling from uh, Congressman Bernie Sanders' office, and I was remember thinking in my mind, wait a minute, I don't remember thinking that I had a, I, I don't, not sure who that is, and <laughs> I, like, and, and, and then I looked him up, and he was the independent, self-described uh, democratic socialist uh, from Vermont, and I said, wait a minute, I, I, I thought I had only applied to democratic offices, <laughs> and then I looked back at the ad, and he had, it was described as a, I think it was a, a progressive uh, Northeastern member, it wasn't a democratic Northeastern member. And so I go in and I meet with uh, Jeff Weaver. Uh, and to be honest, uh, after I met with Bernie, and it was a great meeting, um, the night before I, I, you know, they offered me the job. And the night before I took the job, I remember thinking, um, you know, what's it going to be like to work for a self described democratic socialist <laughs> in, in Congress? Is it going to be, uh, you know, is it, it, how is he going to be able to work with, with the Democrats? And is it going to be, you know, super isolating? And, mm -hmm. and, and I will say it was, it, you know, I kind of got over my fears and went to work for him. And it was one of the best experiences of my whole life because working in the Congress uh, for an independent like Bernie is a completely unique experience. In, in what way? In that you're, you get to see the Congress and how it works from somebody who is something of an outsider, mm -hmm. as opposed to a just standard party guy. Uh, you, it, it was just a, the the whole office's attitude was different. I mean, we worked when I was there. We worked with very conservative members of Congress. Mm -hmm. We worked with very progressive members of Congress. Um, Bernie was seen as as somebody who worked well with other members of Congress, but also was seen as somebody who could forge these left-right coalitions. Mm -hmm. There were a bunch of uh, articles in his 2016 campaign that were written about how he became what was called the the Amendment King right. of the House, which was where he would do these coalitions where he would have very conservative Republicans and very progressive Democrats coming together on a transpartisan issue mm -hmm. you know, in, a, in, a, in a way that where there was there was really no party. So, for example, the bus trips to Canada. Um, I was on. Uh, I think it was the first. Or, I think it was the first bus trip that a member of Congress did to Canada with with um, constituents to go purchase lower priced prescription drugs, mm -hmm. uh, and that was an issue in which we had very conservative Republicans who were super free trade people with us, working with us on that drug importation issue with very progressive members of Congress. That was a, a good example of that. So interpersonally, you've now known the senator for decades at this point. I mean, who is the Senator Sanders on the bus, on the bus trip to, to, to Canada, especially now? Now that you're a speechwriter, you're literally tasked with being his voice in, in some ways. And this is, uh, some people might not know this, but Senator Sanders um, is, is famous for writing his own speeches for the whole course of his career. So this is a, a really novel and new departure for him. I mean, what is that like? So to the first question, I mean, Bernie is what you see is what you get. I mean, I really, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, he, th there's no like public Bernie, private Bernie. Mm -hmm. Like there's just 
Bernie. And and the thing is, I, I should say, I call him Bernie uh, because everybody in Vermont calls him Bernie, <laughs> and and basically, uh, you know, everybody who's I I think who's known him as long as I have has called him Bernie. I mean, I would have to switch over from congressman to to <laughs> senator and. Sometimes I feel a little bit like maybe I should call him senator in front of other people, but that would feel super <laughs> weird. Like calling him senator would just be just because I've known him that long. But, um, and and P.S. He doesn't care about any of that. I mean, like he, yeah, he I, she doesn't care at all. I'm like the only one who's calling him Sanders, and people keep telling me that that's no. weird. I'm like it's a weird compromise that I've made in my brain. No, it's it's it's. <laughs> it, I, I think it's either Bernie or senator. I mean, I go with or Bernie, and everyone. And and the thing is, in Vermont, you know. Everyone's like two degrees of separation from the guy. I mean, I think like he 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 may have actually personally met every single person in Vermont. <laughs> if you told me that, if they did a poll, have you personally met Bernie Sanders? I bet the number is like incredibly uh, incredibly high in 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 Vermont. Doing speeches for him, you know, I I I've told people that Bernie is not like. Uh, Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. I mean, you know, th that scene in one of my favorite movies where they say, don't put it that on the, tele on the teleprompter because he'll read anything off the teleprompter. Like, that is not Bernie Sanders. <laughs> like, so th that is not our speech writing process. Um, Bernie still writes his speeches. I mean, I, I, in some ways, the, ter the, the, the title speech writer is a little bit of a misnomer in that it's like speech supporter, mm. like speech helper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so what I try to do is we have a set of speeches on, you know, this or that issue. I try to get him the information that he needs that he's going to put into his own voice. I mean, I try to get it into his voice, but he's got a very unique voice. He knows exactly how he wants to say things. So I'm there to help get the research and the material that he needs to to put into uh, his voice and the thing is is that you know he his speeches if you listen to them they are very fact driven mm -hmm. i mean it, it's not a lot of um you know it's not a lot of rhetorical flourish mm -hmm. it, it it's this is almost it's not a not exactly a research paper but like here are literal facts that that i'm telling you about about the country, and 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 in, in a sense, it's actually what we call in journalism: it's showing, not telling, mm -hmm. right? Like in journalism, you want to illustrate the picture rather than than sort of describe the picture. You want to actually offer up the goods. Sorry, uh, um, and 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 I think that that's what he's really focused on. It's been successful for him. I think that you know some people have caught on to the fact that he's talking more about his personal story, mm -hmm. and I think that's a really important thing to do in that I think it's important for the public to know that that he's not a machine yeah. he's not a robot that what he is for comes out of a lived experience yeah I think that's 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 key that it's not just that he's been telling his personal story for charming anecdotes he's always very clear to connect why you know what has happened to him and what he's experienced in his life to why it is that his mission his political mission his ideological mission is what it is so speaking of journalism um and bringing your perspective as a journalist to the table you know as someone who is in the same situation i'm curious about your decision making process and and um you know how you made the choice to leave that uh, a li that life of kind of direct advocacy behind because you've done such great work speaking truth to power and being such an independent media presence in a world where there's not a, um, a surfeit of, of independent media. Uh, it, well, I've had a weird career in that I started out working in politics. I worked for Bernie. I worked for a couple other, uh, another member of Congress. I worked for uh, on campaigns. Uh, and then I went into journalism. Usually, a lot of times it goes the other way. It's mm -hmm. like you're working in journalism, then you go into politics. So now, at this point, I was uh, I was in politics, worked in journalism, and now I'm back working for in politics for for Bernie. And and I will say that going into journalism from having worked for Bernie was a difficult thing because uh, much of the major media industry looks has looked very skeptically at specifically Bernie Sanders. Mm. And I want to make a, it's a specific point here, which is that a number of people have gone from politics into media 
but they uh, not many people have gone from Bernie Sanders kind of politics mm. into media. There's a dis there's a difference there. There's a distinction there, and it's it's that I think the I don't think it's a secret that the establishment legacy media looks uh, skeptically at Bernie Sanders and what he represents. So I spent a lot of years where a lot of people were, were always essentially questioning my work, having known that I had once worked for Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And and look, I made I, I, that's fine. Like I made my peace with that. I'm comfortable <laughs> with that. I was proud to have worked for Bernie Sanders in the House, uh, and I think my work as speaks for itself. It won awards. It you know started government investigations. It it you know standard good investigative journalism. Moving out of journalism to come back to work for Bernie Sanders 20 years after I had worked for him was a, was a difficult decision for me because I knew that I was leaving behind a set of skills that I had worked really hard to try to become good at, which is, you know, investigative journalism. And I think the reason I decided ultimately to do it was that I think that the country and the world is in a place right now, facing crises right now, that the most direct action possible to solve those crises is absolutely positively necessary in an immediate sense because of things like climate change and the economic crisis, and that given the opportunity to work in a very direct way on those things was worth the sacrifice of leaving journalism. To be clear, not to say that journalism isn't addressing those right. crises, but for me personally, this was an even more direct way to do it. And I did it, and I, you know, some people criticized me for that. I knew, I knew that was going to happen. Few. Yeah, just a few <laughs> people criticized me for that. But you know what? I, I don't have any regrets. I mean, do I miss journalism every now and again? Yes. Uh, do I like yeah. being criticized all the time because <laughs> I went back to work for Bernie Sanders? No, I don't, I don't like that. But you know what? I have young kids who are relying on us to actually solve the problems that threaten their future. And so if that's the price of of me trying to help with that cause, then that's the price we pay. Yeah, I mean, I I, I feel very similarly. I, did, I don't obviously have the lengthy career that I was offering kind of up on the pyre, as it were. But, you know, what I reflected on was the fact that I was only a writer because I had started writing in response to the political context of 2016. You know, I, I was an attorney sitting at my desk, tweeting to my 100 followers about how angry I was and how I was being erased because, the, you know, I'm a black woman being called a Bernie bro and told that I'm literally a fake person or that I'm a white person or that I'm a Russian bot and all these things. And then I started to write about that experience and write about the way identity was being weaponized at that point in time. And then those articles took off. And then, so the idea that at this point, you know, I was writing because of Bernie bias, well, it's like, I'm an opinion writer, and my political perspective, which is that I am a supporter of left politics, has always been plain. And there's this new kind of phenomenon with, with Twitter, with people's personal politics kind of being out there more, particularly in the opinion writing realm, where, you know, there's an argument that I think that I believe in, which says everyone has biases, and there's a certain honesty to people being upfront about their politics so that readers have an opportunity to judge as they will how to credit the facts that you're laying out for them. Um, but for my personal decision making was to say, if you're only in this because your real agenda isn't to be a writer or to, you know, to have any career path, but to advance left politics because of the exigent circumstances that we live in that you just described, well, then how could I not do any do anything and everything I could to advance this project? So. I'm certainly glad I, that you're here. I completely here. agree. I mean, the, the, the way to put it, the way I put it is that going from journalism into the kind of politics that we're working in now is not a conflict of interest. It's an alignment of interest. Mm -hmm. In other words, why are you, why was I in journalism? Right. It was to expose injustice. It was to expose corruption. It was to expose unfairness and it was to expose a rigged system. So this campaign is, I mean, it is a, in some ways, a traditional political campaign running for an office, but it is a campaign about exposing corruption, right. about challenging economic right. injustice. And so I don't think there's a, I, I don't think it's kind of like a, like a U-turn or a betrayal. Right. It's just part of the work that's being done. And I would agree with you on the, on the other point, which is that you're right. Everybody has 
uh, opinions. Everybody has biases. Nobody is objective. The minute a newspaper says, this is the story we're going to cover and we're not going to cover this story, that is a subjective, opinionated right. decision. And I think that it's, you know, I made no, I, I didn't hide the fact that I had worked for Bernie Sanders when I was a journalist. And I guess my, my point is, is that, look, Ultimately, the question is whether you're in politics or journalism, why are you in politics mm -hmm. or journalism? Are you in there to see your right. byline and lights? Are you in there to, you know, one day get some great job that you think will make you feel good? Mm -hmm. Or are you <laughs> in it to actually solve the problems, the emergencies that are at hand? And right. I think that's what this campaign is really all about. And I think that's what Bernie Sanders has been all about. And I, and I, don't, I really don't think there's actually much of an argument that that's not true. Yeah. I think that's right. Well, thank you so much for coming to talk to us. I know a lot of people are itching for insight into kind of your mental process and what your relationship with the senator has been like. So I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course.